Good Monday morning, everyone. This is Atlanta and Company. I'm Christine Pilar. It's so great to be with you. Reproductive Biology Associates was established in 1983 as Georgia's first IVF treatment center and specializes in helping bring new life into this world. Today, Dr. Monica Best talks about the impact of polycystic ovary syndrome, what it is, and how they can help. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's always, it's always so good to have you, and somehow you always make these medical syndromes and, and things so much. You bring it down to earth for all of us. Well, I hope I can do that today. You, you can. I know, I know you can. There are so many people who suffer from this. So what is it, first of all? So... PCOS, or polycystic ovary syndrome, is a very, very common disorder. Like 7 million women in the United States wow. suffer with this. So it's, you know, has the potential to have, you know, a very great um, impact on the health of women in the, in the United States. So what it is, is it's actually a syndrome where women with polycystic ovary syndrome produce more androgens from the ovary than is normal. Um, all women produce some androgens which are male hormones, male sex hormones from the ovary, but women with PCOS produce an excess amount of them. Um, another aspect of the disorder is that women with PCOS have high insulin levels. So together with the high insulin levels and the high levels of male sex hormones, that creates the syndrome and women with PCOS have irregular menses, they are more likely to have infertility, they have, as an outgrowth of all of the male hormones that they have, they have um, suffer with hirsutism, which is abnormal hair growth on the face and body. Mm -hmm. um, so, and they also have an elevated risk for things like diabetes. So, oh. the syndrome really encompasses, um, you know, multiple, you know, the potential to have multiple health problems as a result of it. Now, with it being polycystic ovary symptom, are there actually cysts that develop? So that's a really great question because really um, polycystic ovary syndrome is a little bit of a misnomer because essentially what happens is women that have PCOS are not ovulating regularly every month and so they have a lot of sort of resting follicles on the ovary. Okay. Um, and so those resting follicles are what you see when you actually do an ultrasound on these patients. So they're not oh. actually cyst. They're just immature eggs that are represented by the follicles that you see on the ovary. But you can see them during an ultrasound. Yes, wow. yes, okay. you can actually see them. And so um, there's a characteristic sort of string of pearls that we often see on the ultrasound, um, which are just the follicles, these resting follicles lining the ovary. What, when you say, so 7 million women are afflicted with this, how often or how early are they diagnosed? So typically, you know, the, one of the major problems with this disorder is that 50% of the women that have it don't even know they have it. Because they might not be experiencing the hair or Well, some they're of that. experiencing some of it, but they, they just don't ever, you know, sort of present to a healthcare provider. So part of our responsibility is to sort of raise awareness about sort of what to look for. Um, and have people go in and get diagnosed because not only does it have an impact on, you know, infertility and their sure. ability to get pregnant, but, you know, as, you know, we've, we've talked about before, you know, because of the risk of diabetes and other health problems, it's good for them to know this for their long-term health. Um, and how to kind of look out for those risk factors and, and be aware of them and actually um, pick them up and treat them. Right. Um, and what causes it? So, you know. Is it hereditary? We, well, some of it is. I mean, I think we don't really know what causes it at the end of the day. Um, but we have the sense that, you know, that it is genetic. We know that, you know, in some studies up to 50% of women that have it, um, can anticipate that their daughter may experience it mm. as well. So, um, but it is for the most part a multi kind of factorial um, condition where we know that there's some impact from genes. We know that there is some impact from the environment as well. We know with the increasing obesity epidemic right. that we are starting to see more PCOS. And okay, so. If you have PCOS and you said it's, it's likely then you might have problems conceiving, why is that and what can be done about it? Do you have to have some sort of surgery? Um, you know, is there something people can take? What is the treatment mm -hmm. so that they can actually have a child and, and finally, you know, ex put that experience behind them? Right. I mean, well, for the most part, you know, as I discussed before, you know, these women have lots of sort of resting follicles on the ovary. So the silver lining is, is that, you know, there are lots of eggs there. They just need help 
generating a mature egg every month and actually ovulating. And so um, if you think back to sort of why PCOS happens, it's because the ovary is producing lots of male sex hormones. Those male sex hormones make the ovary unable to sort of respond to the normal signals that the brain sends to generate that mature egg. So um, we as infertility specialists can give medications to help kind of overcome sure. that resistance to the ovary. So sometimes we give medications to help sort of sensitize the ovary. Typically, we, we give um, medications like metformin or other insulin sensitizers to help increase the ability of the ovary, the ability of the ovary to respond to those signals. Um, we can also give fertility medications to help them generate a mature um, egg on the Wonderful. ovary for ovulation to occur. So, um, you know, the silver lining is there's lots of eggs. They just need a little bit of help generating the appropriate signals to develop a mature egg and to ovulate each month. And so the, the medication, it's effective. You have women yes. who have suffered for this for many years but still can have a child or, or more. Absolutely. Oh, cool. Absolutely. We, I mean, you know, we evaluate them, um, you know, just from a general health perspective um, where we're able to kind of assess what the risk factors are for diabetes. Um, one of the other problems that we're always aware of, aware of as reproductive endocrine Chronologist is, you know, when a woman is not ovulating regularly, you, you worry a little bit about this abnormal cell growth in the uterine lining. So these women are at increased risk for endometrial cancer. So wow. we have to make sure that we approach the whole woman sure. and evaluate for other risk factors. But um, within that, we can, you know, do the workup of infertility. And, you know, oftentimes, you know, it's an easy sort of less aggressive treatment for them because, again, Usually the ovarian reserve is excellent. Right. They just, just need a little bit yeah. of help. Well, yes. thank you so much. Doctor, it's always a pleasure yeah. having you. And if you are experiencing this or you would like more information about Reproductive Biology Associates, give them a call. It's 404-257-1900. Or log on to the website, which is rba-online.com. And this segment was paid for by Reproductive Biology Associates.